G'day fellow flight simmers and random YouTubers. Today I'm going to be talking about an operation or a tool that's used by air traffic controllers to increase airport capacity and maintain efficiency and enhance safety and that's called land and hold short operation. It's commonly referred to as LASO. Okay so as mentioned, land and hold short operations are an air traffic control procedure which is intended to increase airport capacity. Uh, this obviously leads to increased efficiency and it saves fuel and operating costs for the operators. Um, LASO operations facilitate airport operations on intersecting runways. So it's important to understand that and whether it's either two aircraft landing or one aircraft landing while the other one takes off. Uh, many people believe that LASO operations only applies to when you have two aircraft landing, uh, but that is not the case. In this particular video, I'll be concentrating only on Australian operations. And in Australia, the only LASO approved airports are Adelaide, Darwin and Melbourne. Okay, before we start to understand what LASO is all about, or LASO operations, we need to define a few things. The first one is uh, determining which is the active runway or what they call the active and the active for LASO operations is when an aircraft is issued a hold short requirement and it's alerted about traffic on a crossing runway. If you look to the aerodrome map on the left obviously it's Melbourne and you can see that runway 34 is the active and you can see up in the box up there it says LDA for LASO which means landing distance available for LASO for runway 34 is 2,638 metres. This information is vitally important for airline uh, pilots to determine whether they can meet that criteria and be able to land hold or land and hold short of runway 27. For example a 747 or an Airbus 380 which is um, pretty heavy, he may or may not be able to land and hold short. So that is um, that is uh, information that's vitally important. And of course, the other side of that is the passive runway. And the passive uh, runway is when an aircraft has unrestricted use of the full runway length and is alerted about traffic on a crossing runway. So as you can see here, 2.7, if an aircraft was given a permission to land, he could roll right through. And if an aircraft has been given permission to land on the active, he's, there's a requirement for him to hold short. Okay, there are several criteria in, a, in, a, in order to um, enable LASO operations. And one of them is uh, when you have excessive crosswind. In this particular instance if you have a crosswind component including gusts which is in excess of two zero knots you cannot initiate LASO operations. Okay as uh, mentioned there are several conditions for LASO um, and as mentioned the first one is that for either the active or passive runway, including gusts, the crosswind cannot exceed 20 knots. If you have uh, on a dry one, runway a tailwind in excess of 50 knots, uh, you cannot initiate LASO. And if the runway is either wet or damp and have a tailwind, any tailwind, then obviously you can't initiate um, LASO. Um, a simultaneous takeoff and landing is permitted by day only and as I said before LASO is not only about landing but also can have takeoff and landing simultaneously but that can only be done by the day whereas simultaneous landings are only uh, permitted by day and night. Um, also another criteria is the ceiling is not less than the minimum vectoring altitude for the location where LASOs are being conducted and visibility is not less than 8 kilometres. 
Okay, so when you're having Glasgow operation, visibility is of a major factor and minimum vectoring altitude is not something that's easily found. You can't find it in the charts. It's something that the air traffic controller sees on his, um, on his scope. Now, the visibility can be reduced down to 5,000 metres where ATC are assured of sighting the aircraft prior to loss of the surveillance standard. Basically what that means is if air traffic controller can see both aircraft um, and it can maintain separation of those aircraft, the visibility instead of being 8 kilometres can be reduced down to 5,000 metres. And the other criteria, advice to the departing aircraft may be given separately from the takeoff clearance. Okay, so the phraseology for LASO. If you look to the aerodrome map on the on the right, we see Qantas 133 approaching runway 27, and you see, and we'll assume for the purpose of the argument that it's a 737. Velocity 166 is approaching runway 34, and he is an Airbus A320. Okay, so what is the phraseology? Okay, so the controller, first of all, he would say to Qantas 123, Qantas 123, company Air A320 landing on crossing runway will hold short, runway 27 cleared land. And Qantas 133 would say, cleared land runway 27, A320 landing runway 34 will hold short runway 27. And then the controller would say to velocity 166, velocity 166, 737 landing on crossing runway, hold short of runway 27, clear to land runway 34. And that's a bit of a typo, but Qantas 133, uh, correction, velocity 166 would say clear to land runway 34, hold short 27. Okay, so how do you know when LASO operations are in force? Basically, the pilots would be advised that by a statement on the ATIS. In other words, something, uh, for example, Melbourne Terminal Information Papa, runway 34 and 27, land and hold short operations are in progress. And then you'd say the wind, 130 degrees, whatever, temperature, etc., etc. And ATC is required to issue directed traffic information to both aircraft participating in LASO. And as you saw from the previous slide, the phraseology was basically each aircraft was being made aware of the other aircraft and what their intentions were. Now, pilots who elect to participate in LASO must obtain the ATIS as early as possible. And if within 200 nautical miles of a destination where LASO is in progress, immediately advise ATC, LASO approved. In other words, for example, Melbourne Centre, velocity 123, descending to flight level 250, LASO approved. Okay, so um, just on that, I'll, um, I want to show you a... A little app that I've got it's called virtual AWOS which is really really handy and uh, let's say that for you're the tower controller and you turn up to work in Melbourne and you see the condition down the bottom of 170 degrees at 19 knots visibility you can see is one zero kilometers cloud view at 3700 and you want to see well can we have LASO operations today so this is obviously the current runway and if I have a look at runway 34 you can see that runway 34 with the present winds is a 9 knot tailwind and a 2 knot crosswind. So straight away we know that for LASO operations and we'll assume that runway is dry we've got for one of the conditions as we saw that um, you for a dry runway, we cannot have tailwind in excess of five, five knots. Here, you've got tailwind of nine. So straight away, you know that for runway three, four, LASO operations will not be able to be put into force 
on this particular day. Okay, so I hope um, that clears it up for you about LASO operations. And uh, until next time, see you later. Cheers.